Don says in question 35, how is a knowledge of the facets of the archetypical mind used by the individual to accelerate his evolution? Really good question. And the one that I was looking forward to actually in this session. Ross says, we shall offer an example based upon this first explorer archetype or concept complex. The conscious mind of the adept may be full to bursting of the most abstruse and unmanageable of ideas so that further ideation becomes impossible and work in Blu-ray or Indigo is blocked through overactivation. It is then that the adept would call upon the new mind, untouched and virgin, and dwell within the archetype of the new and unblemished mind without bias, without polarity, full of the magic of the logos. Wow. Just wow. So in a previous question, I talked about the unfed conscious mind. That is what Ra invited us to see here in the matrix of mind. And now we can see an example, as Ra says, of how embodying this archetype actually helps. Don is asking, in essence, how does this help? What's the whole point of this? What's the whole point of studying the archetypical mind? How does this help? And Ra gives the example and says, let's use that which, um, that which we have been studying so far, the matrix of mind. How is, how is it helpful to, to have um, knowledge on the archetypical, um, the archetype of the matrix? Here is a very, very um, important example of the mind of an adept, which has been intellectualizing a lot. An adept is somebody who is seeking, let's just call it a spiritual seeker, right? Who has been doing some work already on, on this path. Somebody who has been on this may have a lot of intellectual understandings and, con and concepts and is trying to live those concepts. Um, and here's where it gets interesting because um, it, it's not only intellectual people who have lots of thoughts, uh, intuitive people, right? These are the two sides of the same coin. People who are uh, a lot intuitive, they may not intellectualize, but they dream a lot. I'm not talking about... I'm talking about even daydreaming, you know, meditation. And I'll give you a couple of examples. There is subject A, which you may know, you know, sits down, tries to think or not think, meditate, and it's all thinking. Think and think and thinking patterns, pattern things that I have to do. And, you know, it's just all structure. He says, I cannot meditate. Because of a big issue with defining meditation these days, especially on the shallow understanding of spirituality, uh, subject B, intuitive person, has a lot of visions, you know, and as soon as it shuts its eyes for meditation, it goes into uh, beautiful trips, you know, and it claims that it disconnects itself from itself, right? And it goes into all these uh, beautiful or whatever. It goes into its imagination. No thoughts, they say. See, but the problem is that this is still mental activity. It's producing nothing else than exploring your own mind. So you're getting, you know, to explore the mind, not understand it, not um, give it room. It's uh, it's still helpful. I mean, I that's why I can say that this is not meditation. Because meditation is anything that you allow the mind, the mind to relax. But my point is that there is still mental activity. This is what Ra is saying to me, right? The conscious mind of the adept may be full to bursting of the most abstruse and unmanageable of ideas, right? Unhelpful, uh, not very useful ideas. So that further ideation becomes impossible because it's full of activity. You know, it's just there, you know, doing its own thing. And um, the, the conscious attention of the self is basically just uh, distracting itself. Or 
in the intellectual because again this is this is a societal uh, convention it's not even a societal convention but a cultural convention subcultural convention I should say in spiritual circles that you know they praise people who have uh, a lot of imagination and the intellect is always seen as bad the truth is that both are activities and so what we look is for non-activity that's what we're looking for in the conscious mind when we meditate in this point this is what Ra is saying when this is all uh, obstructed because it's just full of activity then uh, work in blue or indigo is blocked through what's the word over activation the mind is thinking too much or the mind is active it's way too active uh, and again both are overactive intellect or intuition it doesn't matter so what does Ra say what's the medicine they say it is then that the adept would call upon the new mind untouched in virgin mm. so it basically says fine everything that is going on there I recognize as being part of the mind I'm not interested in that not interested in anything that comes through um, but I'm interested in that uh, background the background of my experience I'm experiencing imagination fine I'm experiencing thoughts fine I have nothing against them I'm just here to experience that background right that that's the the consciousness what lies behind I'm looking at the screen not the pixelated uh, animation I'm dwelling there and that's what Ross says and dwell within the archetype of the new and unblemished unblemished mind without bias right no bias no judgment no preference no inclinations nothing just pure abiding in being without polarity you see oh this is uh, it's, it's positive this is negative positive negative there's no polarity and what is that what is that called full of the magic of the logos the logos is uh, it's unpolarized see is unbiased well there are some biases there according to Ra <laughs> a bias towards kindness um, but I mean all all logoi are of course uh, full of this this I mean, I, we can't even call it positive which is intelligent infinity of the original desire that all entities seek and become one so can we call that a bias not really that's just the nature of manifestation anything that is manifested will eventually has to eventually return to source uh, because it, it was never away from source so yeah this is a, a great way to to use the archetypical mind now like I said in a previous question this is the the purpose of meditation is to allow that blank mind which is not a mind without activity it, it can have indeed activity but we don't care about the activity we're not engaged in the activity because it's not like we are the activity and we we are destined to ride the activity no there is a an interesting principle there right that, that is the conscious uh, or the consciousness behind everything that's who you are so that's what we uh, we teach in in the um, in the direct path just to go straight into that and from there allow experience to unfold <laughs>